Doom 64 has been designed exclusively for the Nintendo 64, incorporating a new storyline that builds on existing Doom releases, ultra-smooth gameplay with precision control and performance, stunning 3D graphics, CD-quality music and sound effects, radically redesigned creatures, new and enhanced weapons and secrets, over 30 larger or more challenging levels than any previous gaming system could handle. All blended seamlessly to make Doom 64 the most incredible Doom ever. A. D. N. It's headphones nailed! Welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you another video game review. And in this case, it's going to be the 1997 game Doom 64, originally released for the Nintendo 64 and re-released to many platforms like the uh, like the Xbox, I believe the PlayStation, um, the Nintendo Switch, and ultimately the uh, ultimately Google Stadia. So I had a chance to play the game on Google Stadia using my Android device and the Razer Kishi. So overall the game worked pretty well. The only thing I had to change in the settings was the binding to run in the game, uh, which was for some reason was unbound, but I have a feeling that was, I mean, there were a number of keys that were unbound, but there was a point in the game where um, you had to run and that's it was really only for one point of the game for the rest of the game it wasn't as imperative but uh, once you make that change then um basically the rest of the game went smoothly and that the need for the running key there's a key to be bound to run was pretty early in the game so once that was done it was kind of set it and forget it um but overall as far as the third iteration in the doom franchise i want to say that i enjoyed the game in general um for the most part and i'll get to the part that i didn't like in a little bit but overall the game played nicely it follows the same sort of visual style and gameplay as the first two games so um movement is the same you know forward backward left and right you go you have hallways that go up and down you have to go through doors you have to obtain keys to unlock doors that are coded to red yellow and blue in order to get through them and progress to the various parts of the level you have to toggle switches to open certain areas and ultimately toggle a switch to uh, finish each level so that all stay the same the main difference um, while playing the game is that it's not split up into chapters though looking around there are two unofficial chapters so the first like seven or eight levels are at the UAC bases which kind of comprise of the first chapter and then the second chapter deals with going into hell so um, you'll get one cutscene after the eighth level to let you know that um, hell has lured you into that, onto that base in order to uh, lure you into hell and then the rest of the game is going through hell to ultimately defeat the mother demon so overall the game was fun and enjoyable um the main difference that i or the other difference that i thought was of note in this particular game was that um finishing the final level um or the final boss with the mother demon is infinitely easier if you collect what they call are as the demon keys so there's three keys that you find while playing the game at least one of them is in a secret level so um, if you spend the time to get those, three, get to the that secret level and ultimately find the um, three those three keys, then you get the most powerful weapon in the game, or you are able to upgrade the most powerful weapon in the game called the Unmaker, which is basically like a laser gun, I guess that Hell was the, um, creating in order to, for whatever reason, I guess it wasn't really clear what it was for, but. Um, essentially you get the most upgraded version of the Unmaker so when you're in the final battle or on the final level you can toggle some switches to turn off the portal that is allowing all these demons to come into that level for you to fight. Um, so you have a lot fewer enemies to fight and then um, because you still have a lot of ammo left and a lot of health from defeating fewer enemies then you're able to more easily defeat the mother demon. So for me I actually did not get those three keys so 
um, in fighting the, that final battle, you end up um, basically I end up um, expending a lot of ammunition and health to defeat all those demons. And at some point, I, or a few times, I was able to get to the point where I can fight the mother demon. But now I'm pretty much out of ammo. Um, reading around online, they say it takes about 25 or so rockets to defeat the mother demon. But that's assuming that you don't get take on any hits uh, and your health is um, high enough. You can get the um, health orb thingy, the megasphere, I think. And that's it, sitting right next to the mother demon that she's protecting. So... There's a lot of contingencies um, that have to, and a lot of things that have to go right for you to defeat the Mother Demon without um, first collecting those keys throughout the game. So I will say that I did end up finding a code online to unlock all weapons and weapon upgrades and all of that um, to see how easy it is um, if I had collected those keys. And um, as you'll see in the playlist, um, in the final video that level takes or defeating the the enemies and the mother demon only takes a couple of minutes if you're able to collect those keys turn off turn off the or toggle the switches to turn off the portals and then <clears throat> ultimately fight the monsters that did get through the portal and then defeat the mother demon so one of the things i would recommend now is to get those um keys as you're playing the game and i know i'm recommending this like 25 years or 24 years after the game first came out but if you do decide to play now I would say spend the time to get those keys so that when you get to that final level it'll pay off and you'll be able to more easily defeat the bosses or those all the different um, monsters that are there and ultimately defeat the mother demon that much more easily. Um, so saying that though um, overall the game was fun but the thing that I kind of didn't like was all the basically um except for the initial couple of levels to get you used to the game the entire game felt like um, um basically they were all mazes and puzzles to figure out and they all felt like they were the third act in the first two game um doom games so there wasn't really any i mean granted there's not much story to build upon even though if you read the summary of the um, game, the Doom guy is sent back to um, a US UAC installation because they had, after the first two games, they had set up an installation and um, um, bombarded it with nightmarish levels of radiation so no monsters could ever come through, but then the Mother Demon and the monsters are now radiation converted um, demons, so they're able to come through again. Um, and then ultimately it's a trap set by hell to bring the doom guy to ultimately get rid of him because he was the only one who was able to take down the portal and defeat hell in the first two games um but basically it felt like it felt too much like the third act in the first two doom games to the point where it was very little build up as far as what you were doing why you were there and having only one cutscene after the eighth level kind of didn't feel like it was enough so it kind of like I kind of would have preferred, um, if it were me back in the day recommending the game, would be would have been to have one more cutscene or a cut interstitial, like towards the end of the game, even after maybe the third to last um, level or maybe the fourth to last or something like that, when you're getting into the final depths of hell, that um, something is amiss and you're now you now are in a. Um, you're, you're in like the ultimate like um, ritual ground because like, I think there's a level called a cathedral or something like that. So around that level, say that you're now in the ultimate like shrine of hell um, de you're, that's dedicated to something called the mother demon. You don't know what it is, but it can't be good or something like that. Kind of continue with that theme like the first interstitial, but at least have something so you have a little uh, marginal story to go off of because when you have one interstitial after the 8th level and nothing else after that, it kind of feels like the game gets repetitive. With all the various levels, it's kind of doing the same thing but with different skills, with different skins on levels or in levels that ultimately have similar things to accomplish. So because of that, and then the other thing that I didn't like is the change in music stylings for the game. So now I think, in re like basically in reading online again, 
Um, I guess it was a technological limitation of how much they could fit onto the original cartridge for the N64 version of the game, which is why there wasn't as much music that you could tell. They limited it to uh, select levels and areas and things like that. But when you're playing the game and if you come out of just playing Doom 1 and Doom 2 or if you're used to playing all the mods and you're used to having all these all the music like even if you're sticking just to the original Doom games and then by not having music in this game they kind of have a reason to continue that theme it kind of makes it hard to like the game and get or get into the groove of the game just because it doesn't feel the same as the first two games but on the flip side, when you so now I haven't played Doom three yet. I did play the original like couple of original levels, couple of levels up until the point in the intro where the portal to hell like, gets opened and the demons start flying through. But still, on that initial level, um, I don't now I don't remember if there was music or anything like that or how much music there was. But it kind of sets up the horror game focusing more on horror and that sort of gameplay I guess so this is kind of Doom 64 is kind of like that stepping stone so it kind of sets that up but still I mean when you had the first two games with its musical score to accompany the gameplay it kind of feels odd and this kind of feels out of sorts as far as being a game in the franchise so now ultimately when I do if I do ever do ever get to playing Doom 3 then that's one of those things I'm going to keep in mind to see how they keep that going. Um, so that so overall, if I was to grade the game, I'd give it about an 85% or maybe about a 90%, I would say. Um, so overall, the things I liked is like, they, of course, they kept the same game play stylings as the first two games. The graphics were improved enough to the point where they it felt um, new-ish. So rather than be it wasn't as pixelated as the first two games but it also was limited to the hardware of its time so it does still retain some of the pixelation of its time but it's kind of, they kind of do a little bit of visual trickery to smooth it out a little bit the 3d animations of the um demons and um villains and monsters and all that was overall pretty good so it was a nice improvement over the original so the originals had a 3d look to them but they were still generally 2d sprites i guess sprites is the right word i'm hoping it is but the two the original villain or the original bad guys and demons and all that and doom one and two look, had a 3d look but still if you go around them they had they were still relatively full they were, they were um, still flat textures Whereas in Doom 64, if you're going when you're going around the various um, enemies, they still have or they have a more 3D look. They have more depth to them, so it's probably still more visual trickery. But in general, it um, it looked and felt more of a 3D. So um, it was a good presentation on the N64 platform. And then one of those things that they improved for the game over the original release was to lighten up the levels so i guess the original one of the complaints about the original game was that it was too dark it was hard too hard to see in various areas of the game and various levels and things like that even i guess even with brightness potentially turned up but i'm not sure but what they did in this game was they lightened up all the um the colors and textures and all that so it was easier to go around the levels it was easier to see what you're looking at and the difficulty was moved on over into the actual gameplay rather than the visuals so it made for a more enjoyable game and it continued to work well as far as the next iteration in the doom franchise so all of that worked well um as far as things i didn't like like i mentioned the biggest thing was not having the music in there so i kind of hoped that in redoing or re-releasing the game for the modern platforms that they would have um or my my hope was to that they would re-add the music into the game of where it was originally planned to do planned to be but then the flip side is they probably didn't they don't have the rights anymore they couldn't get the rights in the re-release so that's kind of why they didn't do it so it's one of those things where i hope that at some point they do that but um it's hard to say that they would ever do that so but still for me the music is the biggest down down side to the game because it doesn't it takes away from the look and feel of the franchise and on the flip side it would have worked better and the other thing that i didn't like to, in the game was the lack of cutscenes as far as what's going on uh what's 
the purpose of the, you know, um, purpose of the game. There, and there might have been an intro in the beginning of the game. Actually, now don't remember, but it's like one of those things where if you have to read what the summary of the game is in order to understand what's going on, then it kind of takes away from the game. So it would have been nice to have a scroll in the beginning of the game. Um, if I'm not remembering incorrectly that there wasn't, but like the um, original games, it would have been nice to continue to have the um, game split up into chapters. So they still have, I think it was like 28 or 30 chapters. So splitting it up. Um, so if they do split it up in threes, like eight by three chapters, so 32 levels, that would have worked. But even if they did it at, after level eight, kept the cutscene after um, the third level, and then um, put another cutscene or another um, card in after, say, level um, 12 or 20, or like I said, towards the end of the game, into the last few levels, or right before the last few levels, would have made it worth it to the point where at least now you have a kind of general guiding scope of what's going on, what you're doing, what the purpose of the next set of levels is, just because um, having that guide makes it good to go in, good, and it continues with the theme and level stylings of the first two games. And having one cutscene for um, um, of text inserted into the game feels like it's a, the least of the um, technical requirements to get it done. I mean, you could probably have you know fewer monsters at the end of in the last level, or have you know two switches instead of three, or something like that, or have to collect two keys instead of three, and add a scrolling text to figure out what's going on. So. Like I said, overall, I give the game about a 90%. So overall, it was still a fun Doom game. It continued with the... Um, it continued mostly along the themes of the first two games, so I can't really say too much. It's, or I don't really have anything overly negative to say. It, it sets up the game to have a more 3D look, so it sets up Doom 3 um, nicely for when that's released as far as continuing technical advancement. So as far as mostly as far as the visuals go just because you know the weapons and all that were generally ported over they do introduce one new um weapon in the form of the unmaker so in general very well done and a very enjoyable game so uh like i said overall i like playing it now it does and then also one last bit on the music front the one thing that i did think they did really well was the ambiance as far as having it feel uneasy like it's a deserted moon base um in general as far as having it be empty you're the only marine there so having a generally uneasy feeling about it was very well done so and then like having the echo effect like when you're reloading your weapon you have a slight echo sound effect which was well done um and empty hallways and echoes, um, ambience and all that, that all was done, but still. And so I kind of see how they could have done, how why they did what they did as far as the music, but to, to not have any music or setting up a better soundtrack than they had would have made for a better game, I think. So, like I said, overall the game is, I give it about a 90%, generally well done, visuals were nice, gameplay was fun and exciting. So aside from a few small things that were missing, in my opinion, the game still holds up as far as a good game. It's still a game of its time based on the visuals, at least compared to, you know, Doom 3 or Half-Life or even more modern games. But for what they did at the time, it does make for a good sequel to in the Doom franchise. So it's kind of, I guess it's kind of like Doom 2.5 because we they didn't make Doom 3 it's, itself. So it would have been, I guess if they had continued with, instead of Doom 3, three if they had called it doom four or um had thought at the time to call it doom eternal or something like that or doom reborn or something like that it probably would have worked better in the numbering and naming scheme so but that's neither here nor there so overall i definitely recommend it it plays well on the google stadia um i played the whole the game um like i said entirely with the 
Razer Kishi on Google Stadia. I think there was one point where I had some bandwidth issues and the game stuttered, but my internet caught up and it was fine after that. So aside from one small hiccup, the game played um, very well in general, so I can't complain about that. So um, I have to give, or I want to give props to the Google Stadia platform for its stability in the gameplay. Um, so it's generally pushing the highest, as far as I know from what Google Stadia does, is that it pushes the highest quality version of the game and then it sends it to you depending on, or your your view quality is, um, depends on um, what your subscription plan is. So the free is like 1080p and the pay subscription version is 4K if memory serves, but because this game is that old, it's hard to tell the difference. But in any case, um, I recommend playing it there and with a controller because, it, of course, the game originally was um, released in a way to play on a controller in the form of the N64 controller. So um, in any case, that's really all there is for this review. So like I said, I recommend playing Doom 64. I definitely recommend giving it another chance to play. Um, if I was to say play order, definitely play Doom 1, 2, and then Doom 64. Having not played Doom 3 in its entirety, it's hard to say where that will fit in the grand scope of the quote story of the game, or whatever the lore of the game is, but um, if I ever do get around to playing Doom 3, then I'll give that review and see how that fits in the grand scope of things, but as far as just as far as current knowledge based on Doom 1, 2, and 64, um, the story fits in nicely um, knowing what happened in, as far as the events of those the first two games. So overall a good progression there, a nice... Um, like I said, overall the levels were nice and well designed, but because of the lack of, of cutscenes to tell what's going on after the first one, there's very, it's kind of hard to say anything good there, but overall a fun game, it's still a fun Doom game and worth playing. So that's all there is for this particular review, so if you have any questions, comments, feedback, do you like, dislike the game, what are your memories of it, do you have fond memories, bad memories, did you, ever, did you stop playing because it was too different, then you can comment on this post on Twitter at BattelN01, you can also Support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash battalion01, where you can also already get um, the upcoming schedule of content for the rest of October, as far as, or as well as the um, next set of scheduled game reviews. So um, look out for that uh, coming soon as far as the next gameplay videos. Um, so if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe to that at youtube.com slash battalion01 to check out those videos um, as they're coming up. And if you haven't had a chance to check out the gameplay videos for Doom 64, I'll have a link to the in the show notes to the uh, playlist for the full game, which is out now, so definitely worth checking out. But of course, if you subscribe to the channel, that's the easiest way to stay up to date there and hit the bell so you get notified as new videos get uploaded. Um, and of course, if you want to subscribe to the show and, or get all the subscription links, check out past posts and all of that good stuff on the website, then you can check them out at headphones in the old dot reviews. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode, and 